Hello, Nikolai Markovich from Echo Lake Technologies, echolaketech.com. In this video, I'm going to show you the difference between a current user and current page user. And this is handy if um, in your app you create accounts and you want to create a uh, user administration uh, page. Uh, this way you can go in and log in as yourself and then you can pull up all your different user profiles and then go in and make modifications to them as needed and you do that using the uh, current page user. So I'm going to walk through that in this video. Basically what I have set up here on this page is a simple uh, information on the current user, uh, the person who's logged into the, uh, the app, just their first name, last name, and their uh, email. And then here I've got a simple repeating group. It's just searching for all the users that I have in my, in my database here. And then within the cell, just going to click on the text editor here to make it a little easier to read. I have their name, uh, first name, last name, their email, birthday, um, and then also account status. And I'm actually going to use this account status to go and show you um, how we can make a change to the current uh, page user. You can see here that this is all current cell user. And basically within the repeating group, each one of these cells, we want to get the current cells um, user information. Now when we get to the current page in a moment, um, you'll see that that is going to be different than the current user. And basically what we got on here, I've just got this little pop-up. I'm not going to really get into that, but just so you can see, it opens up um, a display for some information. Uh, maybe I'll just open this, Elements. So this pop-up here, user uh, information is the type. And then I've got a little text field that just shows information on it, real simple. Uh, but what I really wanted to get to is on this page button here. So on this page, when we click on that, I'm going to go to another page. Um, and it's going to basically send the data to send as the current user cell. All right, so when you come over here, I don't want to send current user because that will be me logged into the app. I want to send the current cells user. So this is an important thing. When you go in your app and you're trying to modify and look at other users' uh, information in your admin page, you want to make sure that you're not doing it to yourself as a current user, but you're doing it as a current cells user. And in a moment, I'll show you the current page user. So we click on that and we go to this other page. Let me just go over to uh, repeating group two. And this is the page that it'll go to. And on here, what I've done is I've got two text fields. This first text field, all it is is just to show again that uh, uh, the current user, me, uh, that my information and so forth, an email. And then the current page user. So on here, it's the current page user, their current page user's first name, and their current page user's last name. So note, this is an important distinction here that it's got page in here. If this was my information, it would say current user, not current page user. And again, current page user's email, current page user's account status. And then over here, what I'm going to do is I have a simple uh, drop down, and I'm just going to change the account status uh, active and passive. The default value, <clears throat> again, current page user, not current user. And then a simple button here that will go in and make changes to the user. So when I click on the button, make change to user, it's going to be current page user. Now when you come in here, it's going to give me the option. I can pick current user, but that would make the change to me as the user logged in. And I want to do it on the current page user. Again, if you're creating an admin page and you want to go and make changes to uh, counts of users in your app, you want to be using the current page user. And then afterwards, I just do a simple reset of uh, the input. All right. And that's basically it to, to set it up. Again, the, I just want to highlight the big thing here to, to be aware of is that you're going to be modifying and changing not the current user, because that's you, but the current page user. All right. Let's, so let me just go do a refresh. I'm already logged in. So you can see current user. This is just a made-up name and user1. So uh, 
the repeating group shows all the different users that I have in here. So I'll just pick on Susan Smith here. Details again, a little simple pop-up. But what I wanted to show here is that the account status is currently passive. And when I click on page, it is going to go to her page. Now on her page, again, current page user is Susan Smith. I'm still logged in as the current user. My account status, or rather Susan's account status is passive. And say I want to make it active. Update, and then right there, it's active. Now when I go back, you can see that her account is active. Similarly here on Bob Jones, we go here, current page user, Bob Jones, passive, active, like that. I go back. I just wanted to show you also, so these, I was uh, modifying these earlier. Um, the account status here is blank, so when I go to page, I just have it set up as a select user status. So I'm just going to go to the editor here for a moment. So you can see the placeholder is select user status. So if the value in here is empty, it's going to put select user status. If there is a value in the database, it's going to be the current page user's account status. So in the case of this user, Joe Smith, there's nothing in the database. It's empty right now. So on this drop down, it has select user status. And I pick pass, or active rather, and update. And go back here. And there it is. All right, so basically that's um, how you go about using the uh, current page user and making updates. I do want to show one other thing from a security perspective. Let me go to the workflows. One page is loaded. So since you're working on a admin page here of a users and you can go in and, and make some updates to their accounts, I put in here for a security purpose that this, when the page is loaded, so this is again the repeating group uh, page, um, repeating group two page, but this has got the, uh, the ability to go make changes here. I also, uh, well, let me finish this first, the workflow. So what I've done here is it'll go to the index page, the index page here, so the landing page, if you will. Um, only when the current user's email is not user1 at test1. So again, I'm logged in here right now as user1 as test1. That's the current user. And so when it is not that user, go to the index page. And let me just do a quick demo on that so you can see. So I'm logged in as user1. Now, uh, just in case you're not aware, you can go into the, the data tab here and you can do a run as any of these users without using their login um, or their password. So I'm just going to click on run as. Now it actually opens up a new window um, in bubble uh, logged in as that user. But I've got another tab here that's already open and all I need to do here is do a refresh so it's user one. Now when I refresh it Okay, now I'm a different user. I'm whatever that user it shows, user two, or user six rather. So what it does, it's behaving as it should. It's going to bring me right to the index page because it only allows user one to go to that admin page. Now I'm going to run it as user one. And this page, uh, I'm going to go into a preview. And there I am. Now. The interesting thing, you see that it's got this lorem ipsums here, right? So the reason why it has that is because I actually started on this page here. So it's trying to take the current page user. <clears throat> Since I didn't send it any current page user information, this is why it's coming up with this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back. I'm still as user one, this Joe Walker. And what I'm going to do is just go to page and it's all set. The reason being is because the prior page that I, when I was on here, um, I was logged in as a different user, then I went back to Joe Walker, 
and it didn't know who the current page user was because I didn't send it any information. The, the app did not send this page any information. But when I went back here and I clicked on a page, it sends the data, the current, the current cells data. So let's just kind of quickly walk through that. It's going to send the current cells another page. It's going to send the current cells user to repeating group 2's page. So when I go to repeating group 2's page, okay, now that current cell from the prior page from the repeating group is the current page user on this page. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, once you get used to it, it's, it's pretty simple and, and straightforward. It can be a little confusing at first. Um, this is why when you're starting out, you may want to use some of these text fields um, that show who the current user is and who the current page user is uh, to avoid some, some confusion and seeing who's really logged in and so forth because sometimes you can get a little confused when so I'm Joe Walker here if I go and click on page so the current user is Joe Walker user 1 the current page user is also the same user so sometimes it can get a little confusing having some text fields in there can help every once in a while to get things organized um, and uh, let's see what else back to the workflow here on this index page again from a security perspective you don't want anybody to go in get access to your um, your admin page so you can put in a little uh, conditional in here saying current users email is not user one so basically any other user except current current uh, user being user one it's going to go to the index page I uh, hope this video was uh, helpful for you. Again, it's a, it's a great way to set up admin pages, or even if you have an app that has different uh, users in it, uh, different user types, I should say. So if you have a manager uh, who has employees, you may want to set this up as a manager being the user, and then the employees would be the set up as the, the current page user. So if you can imagine here, so the user would be the manager, and then the employees would be in the repeating group here, and then you can go make updates to the user profiles. So hopefully this was uh, helpful for you and it made sense. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. That would be greatly appreciated. If you have any comments, uh, please leave them down below, and we'll see you in the next video.